see, it was all about Bush was going to do this. No, Bush was a puppet. Just like Nixon and Carter and Reagan and Bush and Clinton and Bush and Obama, they're just puppets and we always obsess over them and the media acts like they're running something. It's the executive power held by the National Security Council. In fact, three weeks ago, they had an article about General James Jones and the National Security Council saying they've now taken over continuity of government, even from the executive and Homeland Security, and that this private group runs it all. And then General uh, Jones was in the CFR website saying, writing, I take all my orders from former national security heads, Henry Kissinger and the CFR. I mean, that's why in the last week there have been four mainstream news articles that we posted at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com with Bilderberg group members like Etienne Davignon, the chairman of Bilderberg, saying, we set up the European Union, we set up the G20, we've, we've set up the New World Order banking system. I mean, now they're openly bragging it's world government and they run it. But it is the awareness itself that will drive the change. And one of the ways it will drive the change is through global governance and global agreements. But the many business leaders who have been present here uh, are among those taking leadership in other ways. Yet these problems can be overcome by a joint effort in our, and between our countries. 2009 is also the first year global governance with the establishment of the G20 in the middle of the financial crisis. The climate conference in Copenhagen is another step towards the global management of our planet. This is collective action, people working together at their best. I think a new world order is emerging and with it the foundations of a new and progressive era of international cooperation. And then if I dare talk about it, they go, oh, shut up, Jones. You crazy nut, none of that exists. And if you talk about it, you're going to cause violence. Just give in to the New World Order, roll over to it, hand your guns in. Let's start with uh, the airport adventures, which they now admit are going nationwide with the Viper teams at bus stops, train stops, the streets, shopping malls, random vans, sending you through body scanners, biometrically scanning 360, your naked body. Now, I've seen more in-depth images by the actual companies where they can zoom in on pores. Okay, so they're showing you a low-res image, but totally naked. Your family, it's child porn. They don't care. Uh, now, if you take a picture of your two-year-old daughter in diapers, and this, this made ABC News and CNN, the children's bottoms weren't even seen, but because the children were had towels around them hugging. That was a three-year-old and two-year-old. They were arrested. Their children were taken. So that's th things that aren't bad are called bad. But then the government recording your naked wife, you, your children, and now they're going in at all major airports, 214, and their uh, people in Houston are being forced through them. But people are refusing and saying, no, you perverts, you're not going to do that. So Aaron Dykes and Rob Dew back from six days of adventure uh, with uh, the police state in Canada and the U.S. Uh, tell us what happened. Well, I got hit up first. This was in uh, D.C. flying to Detroit. You got long hair. You get That's pulled right. out every time. Some <laughs> kind of Al Qaeda. But uh, what I, Aaron was already through um, security, and I walked through, and they go, "Oh, sir, can you step in here?" And I said, uh, "So what's that?" And they said, "Oh, this is our RFID scanner." And I said, "No, I'm not going in there." And uh, what do you mean? And I said, "I'm not going in there." I don't. I said, "I don't agree with that." And they said, "Oh, well, it's voluntary." I said, "Well, good. I'm not doing it." Yeah, but so that's like SeaWorld made you oh, thumbprint right. at first. It was voluntary. Now it's mandatory. It's like dog training. Passengers describe a terror attack and the arrest of a suspect who tried to blow up a plane as it landed at Metro Airport. We heard a loud pop, then a bit of a smoke. Sounded first like a balloon being popped. All of a sudden, heard some screams and flight attendants ran up and down the the aisles and everything's crazy people are screaming there's fire on the plane so there was a lady shouting back and she was saying uh, things like uh, what are you doing what are you doing um, and uh, at that moment I was sure I was gonna die and we're learning tonight more about the suspect let's get to Fox News Andrea Isom she begins our team coverage she is live at Metropolitan Airport Andrea as the hours go on, you are right. We are learning more about the suspect, and quite frankly, the details are chilling. The man, the menace, 23-year-old Abdul Mudala of Nigeria, 
Mudala's despicable actions were all on al-Qaeda's behalf. Sources telling Fox News his instructions were to blow up the plane over U.S. soil. The intelligence community knew about Umar Farouk Abdulmutallab weeks ago and failed to spread word that would have put him on the no-fly list. The father of the suspect in the Christmas incident warned U.S. officials in Africa about his son's extremist views. That a report was prepared and it was sent on to the CIA in Langley, Virginia, CIA headquarters, but it was not disseminated to the wider intelligence community. Obviously, when you have a father coming in and talking to the embassy about a son who's radicalized, gives the embassy the passport number, the first thing you would think is a, a very fast effort to see if the person's got a visa and suspend the visa. One of the things you don't know about is the number of people that we have turned away because their name has been on the watch list uh, or on the no-fly list. Only my mom could, but not me and my dad, because both me and my dad are, are on the watch list. Tough to believe, but eight years later, we are still talking about connecting the dots at a failure to communicate. Call for immediate reviews on how this guy got on the plane and how he was able to get some explosives on the plane. So we got a world to go. Uh, this is a, uh, a controlled patsy. Facts are facts. You can have your own opinions, but you can't have your own facts. And we have this, uh, this same pattern that we've seen again and again. We have these individuals that have very limited mental equipment, but nevertheless, they're able to work miracles. In other words, they can do things that a normal person would never be able to do. You'd be arrested, you'd be questioned, you'd be searched, you'd be stopped in some way. He gets out of countries, he's disheveled, looks like he's drugged, <laughs> stumbling around. I mean, this is classic. He doesn't, he doesn't get on any serious uh, list of, uh, for scrutiny or, or special search. And then we have this famous story of the well-dressed Indian who accompanies him. I saw two men and they caught my eye because they seemed to be an odd pair. One was uh, what I would describe as a poor looking black teenager around 16 or 17. And the other, the other man, a, a age 50-ish, uh, wealthy looking Indian man. And I was just wondering why they were together kind of strange and I watched them approach what I would call the, the ticket agent, the final person that checks your boarding pass before you get on the plane. He gets from one plane to another thanks to this Patsy minder, a Patsy chaperone or Patsy monitor. The only person that spoke was the Indian man and what he said was uh, this man needs to board the plane but he doesn't have a passport and the ticket agent responded well if he doesn't have a passport you can't get on the plane to which the Indian man responded back, uh, he's from Sudan, we do this all the time. And the ticket agent said, well then you'll have to go and talk to my manager. And she directed them down a hallway. Uh, and, and that was the last time that I saw the Indian man mm -hmm. and the black man I didn't see again until he tried to blow up our plane. Then I'd be interested to see, is there a passport? Won't the FBI please show us a passport if there is one. They won't release the videos from Amsterdam. I mean, this is suspicious. Oh, yes. I think it's beyond suspicious. It's a clear case of a patsy. So he's a controlled asset. And, of course, it's not a matter of failure to connect the dots. We're hearing all about the unconnected dots. No. This is the desired outcome. Let me just point out a couple of other things here. Uh, we're told that uh, the, uh, the this uh, alleged uh, bomber, right, the Nicker bomber, whatever they call him, uh, he was in contact with this character, Awlaki, in Yemen. And of course, he, this Awlaki, I call him Awlaki the CIA lackey. Awlaki the lackey, and remember, he's a CIA lackey. He's a double agent, a triple agent, if you want. He is used uh, as a kind of beacon to recruit patsies across the world. And they can always sheep dip somebody like Major Hassan. If they want to say, you're linked to Al Qaeda, they just have you exchange a few emails with this Awlaki. And that's what he's good for, right? He goes back to 9-11 and Hani Hanjour. So this, this guy, is, uh, he's, he's, a, he's a U.S. agent under whatever layers of, of garb that he's got. The other thing is, how was this uh, young uh, patsy, uh, Omar Farouk Mutalab, how was he radicalized? And I think we're getting some pretty good indications that it's this Brixton Mosque, Finsbury Mosque, 
access in London, the school for patsies, the, the British patsies. Which, patsies. by the way, six months ago, I remember it, you predicted we'd see plane bombings out of that mosque.